Hello friends, welcome to this next video on complex analysis. This is the 26th video, right? So what we were doing, we were studying some, in the last video, we, we were studying some fundamental functions in complex uh, analysis. We have studied the polynomial functions, we have studied the rational functions, and now we study the exponential function. Exponential function is a function f of z is equal to e to the power z, where z is a complex number. So this function is very important in uh, complex analysis. Why this function is important? This this function is important because of two reasons. First is its properties. This function has very nice properties, which makes it very useful for uh, various applications. And then, in case of complex analysis, we define the trigonometric functions and hyperbolic functions in terms of e raised exponential right so because of these two reasons the uh, exponential function is uh, an important function in complex analysis so we will study this function a little bit in this uh, present video so let us start with the definition okay so what is the definition of exponential function so this is nothing but e raised to power z i can write as x plus iota y where x is the real part of z and y is the imaginary part of z i can use the uh, formula that e raised to power a plus b is e raised to power a into e raised to power b right so now i can use the eulers formula that e raised to power iota y is cos y plus iota sin y right into e raised to power x so actually e raised to power z is defined as e raised to power x where x is real so e raised to power x is exponential of real into cos y so y is again real so we know how to compute cos y plus iota times sin y again sin uh, y is real so we know that how to compute sin y so this is how we compute the uh, exponential function in case of complex analysis right okay so one thing which you should know that we have this thing that e raised to power z is e raised to power x into cos y plus iota sin y right now what is the real part of e raised to power z real part of e raised to power z is not real part obviously real part is e raised to power e raised to power x cos y and imaginary part is e, e raised to power x into sin y and then what is modulus of e raised to power z modulus of e raised to these are the things which we will use again and again modulus of e raised to power z is modulus of e raised to power x into modulus of cos y plus iota sin y right so this is a real number and always positive so its modulus is itself into what is the modulus of this function it is cos square y plus sin square y raised to power half which is 1 so this is e raised to power x so modulus of e raised to power z is e raised to power x right now what is argument of e raised to power z it is easy to know that e argument of uh, argument when we write a function f in terms of r e raised to power iota theta then this theta is our argument right in this particular case e raised to power z is in this particular case e raised to power z is e raised to power x which is our r into e raised to power iota y but i can write uh, this thing also e raised to power x into e raised to power iota y plus 2 pi k why because sine and cosine both are periodic with period 2 pi k okay so value does not change so it means that argument of e raised to power z is y plus 2 pi k iota. Not iota. Okay. So argument of e raised to power z is pi plus 2 uh, y plus 2 k pi where k is a k is an integer where k is an integer. So this thing is uh, what we have to note. So we I'll write it here that argument of e raised to power z is y plus 2 pi k where k is an integer it can take value 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and so on so we have you can note that that e raised to power z okay the, it has a unique magnitude but it has many uh, arguments so what does it mean it mean that mean that we have something like this if we have a function z 5 okay and then we ha uh, 
is 5 plus 0 iota uh, sorry number complex number 5 plus 0 iota and then we have a complex number 5 plus 0 plus 2 pi iota okay these are two different complex numbers but obviously when you draw when you see it on the plane they represent the same point what is that point that is a point which is 5 on x axis 1 2 3 4 5 so this is the point its name is 5 plus 0 iota its name is also 5 plus 2 pi iota its name is also 5 plus 4 pi iota but these are different complex numbers now if you take the exponential of this function then exponential of all these different complex numbers will be same right so you have e raised to power 5 into e raised to power 0 in the first case e raised to power 5 into e raised to power 2 pi in the second case e raised to power 5 into e raised to power 4 pi in the third case this is 1 this is 1 this is 1 okay so in all the cases we are getting it equal to e raised to power 5 so what is uh, uh, it means that e raised to power x z is not a 1 1 function okay is that thing clear so what is happening that for many values of z okay in here we have a c our complex plane for many values of z we are getting a single value of e raised to power z so e raised to power z is not a 1 1 function and this thing you should note because in case of real analysis e raised to power x was a 1 1 function okay so this thing you should know that you should know note that in case of real analysis e raised to power x is a 1 1 function whereas in case of complex analysis e raised to power z is not a 1 1 function right okay so next thing which we should note is the following that in fact uh, i am saying that e raised to power z is not a 1 1 function in that regard i have a theorem i will write it down i have a theorem okay what is that theorem this theorem says that the equation e raised to power z e raised to power z is equal to 1 holds if and only if z is equal to 2k pi alta where k is an integer it means that e raised to power z will assume one value for infinite many values of z that is the first part of the theorem the second part of the theorem says that e raised to power z1 is equal to e raised to power z1 z2 if and only if z1 is equal to z2 plus 2k pi alta okay where k is an integer okay so this thing implies that e raised to power z is not a 1 1 function because if it is a 1 1 function then e raised to power z1 is equal to e raised to power z2 should imply that z1 is equal to z2 but instead we are getting this thing right so this theorem is very simple to prove very easy to prove you can just write the proof okay so what we have we have uh, first we suppose that e raised to power z is equal to 1 okay it implies that e raised to power x into e raised to power eta y is equal to 1 right so it means that modulus of e raised to power x into e raised to power eta y is equal to 1 it implies that the modulus is 1 for this thing the modulus is 1 therefore i get e raised to power x is equal to 1 this implies x is equal to 0 so when x is equal to 0 it means that e raised to power eta y uh, e, it means that my z is actually 0 plus iota y right and next therefore e raised to power z is e raised to power iota y is equal to cos y plus iota sin y and you are saying that this is equal to 1 it means that cos y is equal to 1 and sin y is equal to 0 this happens when we are on real axis that is y is equal to 2k pi iota okay so it means that we have proved that therefore it means that z is equal to therefore it implies that z is equal to 0 plus 2k pi iota right this is what we had to prove we have proved this way now the converse right for proving the converse you have z is equal to 2k pi iota therefore e raised power z is equal to e raised power 2k pi iota this is cos of 2k pi plus iota sine of 2k pi which is 1 plus 0 iota which is 1 so this thing is if and only if okay now let us prove the second thing second thing is very easy to prove we have e raised power z1 is equal to e raised power z2 if and only if e raised power z1 
into e raised power minus z2 is equal to 1. If and only if e raised power z1 minus z2 is equal to 1. Now use the part 1. So this happens if and only if z1 minus z2 is equal to 2k pi eta. I have used the part 1 of the theorem. Right? So you have z1 is equal to if and only if z1 is equal to z2 plus 2k pi eta. So in this way you can prove the theorem. So it means that the conclusion is the crux is that e to power z is not a 1 1 function. Okay. This is the thing which you should note right and uh, the next thing we should you should note that I'll elaborate this thing more but note one more thing that e raised to power z is never 0 ok obviously e raised to power z is equal to e raised to power x into cos y plus iota sin y there is no point at which these two will be simultaneously 0 and this is never 0 so e raised to power z is never 0 and it will assume all other complex values it will assume all other complex numbers except 0 it can assume any value that is the first note note for the point second is that e raised to power z is an entire function you can prove that this is differentiable everywhere on the complex plane okay entire means it is analytic everywhere on complex plane and moreover the derivative is e raised to power z itself this is the property which we expect Right, and the third thing which I have uh, explained is that e raised power z is not a one one function. These are the things which we have to uh, note. Okay, and the fourth thing uh, here this means that this is is this function onto function. This function is a function when onto function when you see it from c to c minus zero. If if you are seeing it from c to c, this is not an onto function because zero is left in the right hand side right so e raised power z is not one one function this is important right so let us discuss this thing more right so i just told you that e raised power z1 is equal to e raised power z2 if and only if z1 minus z2 is equal to 2k pi eta right so it means that e raised power z is equal to e raised power z plus 2k pi eta right where k can be any integers so in particular when i take k is equal to 1 so i have e raised to power z is equal to e raised to power z plus 2 pi iota so it means that i have this function f of z is equal to f of z plus 2 k 2 pi iota so it implies that 2 pi iota is period of exponential function 2 pi iota is period of e raised to power z so the next node where the point is f of z is equal to e raised to power z is a periodic function okay periodic function we say periodic function with the period 2 pi i right so you should be knowing the definition of periodic function definition of periodic function what is the definition of periodic function a function f is said to be periodic if f of z is equal to f of z plus i'm sorry this is not when i stopped working a function is said to be periodic if f of z is equal to why this pen is not writing sorry for the interruption in the last video so what I was saying, I was saying that f of z is said to be periodic if f of z is equal to f of z plus lambda for some lambda and this lambda is called uh, period of f, right? And generally we take the smallest such lambda, okay? So the fifth node where the point is that f of z is equal to e raised to power z is a periodic function with period lambda. right okay so it means that if you draw uh, divide your complex plane into strips for example if i have this strip this is pi iota this is minus pi iota right and then this is 3 pi iota okay so the length of the strip is 2 pi 2 pi so this is 2 pi right then now you can see that the behavior of the function here 
okay will be similar to the behavior of the function here because of the period 2 pi right and behavior of the function here will be similar here here will be similar to here the behavior on this line is similar to behavior on the line 2 pi i 2 pi i eta and so on it means that the function will behave similarly in this strip and in this strip okay and also in this particular strip if you have a strip you divide define the strip as sn is equal to x plus i eta y such that x is from minus infinity to infinity and y is from 2n minus pi minus 1 pi to one side you have to take open and one is closed 2n plus 1 pi okay so this is uh, where n can be any integer right then in this particular strip the function e raised power z is 1 1 right so it means that if you restrict to your domain okay if you take your function as from c to c this is not a 1 1 function we are talking of exponential function but when you take it as a function from any sn to c okay this is a 1 1 function right let us conclude this thing if we take our function exponential function from c to c it is not a 1 1 function if you take it as a function from c to not a 1 1 and not on to if you take it from c to c minus 0 this is not 1 1 but it is on to okay and if you take e raised power z from sn to c it is 1 1 not on to and if you take your function from sn to c minus 0 it is 1 1 as well as on to okay so these are the things which we should note about exponential function in the next video we will study trigonometric functions thank you